Hi, and welcome to the third episode of PSC's Tech Bytes. Today, we'll talk about how to create a custom provider for the PMP provisioning engine, so that whenever you need to extract or apply a template onto a target site, you will be able to use custom code to extend the capabilities of the engine. So let's move to Visual Studio and see how to play with it. First of all, in order to extend the PMP provisioning engine, you will need to create a class library in Visual Studio and you will have to reference the PMP core library using the NuGet package in that project. Then you will have to create a custom type like a class, for example, implementing this interface, iProvisioning Extensibility Handler, which is available in the office dev PMP .core .framework .provisioning .extensibility namespace. quite a long name. Once you have uh, implemented the interface, you will find the extract method as well as the provision method. Those two methods will be used by the uh, extensibility handler to customize the behavior of the provisioning engine during uh, uh, in the information architecture extraction or during the information architecture provisioning. Moreover, you have also a get tokens method, which you can use if you want to customize the token, uh, the tokens managed by the engine during the provisioning uh, of the content. Uh, or of the information architecture. Well, in this sample, I will not use the extract method, so I will simply return the template. As you can see, the extract method uh, get as input the context, the client context of uh, uh, CISOM, the provisioning template, which is uh, applied uh, or extracted in this case uh, from the target site, uh, and the creation information as well as the scope uh, and any custom configuration data that you could have for your uh, uh, custom extensibility provider. Uh, likewise, the provision method gets the context, the template that will be applied to the target site, the provisioning template applying information, this time because we are going to apply a template onto a target site, the token parser so that we can customize the tokenization of uh, uh, tokens and content inside the XML template of the uh, PMP provision template, again the scope and any configuration data as a string. So just for the sake of making an example, I will skip the extraction and I will skip the get tokens, which will simply return an null object, which will be just ignored by the engine. While in the provision, I will show you just for the sake of simplicity, how to get a reference using the season client context to the current web, to a list that we are going to provision using the template that I will show you pretty soon. And inside this, uh, uh, custom provider, I will simply enable the creation of folders uh, in my uh, custom list, which is something that you can uh, actually do with the engine out of the box, but this is just to show you how to play with the extensibility model. So I get the list uh, reference, I'll do the execute query, I try to retrieve the list, and if I have a message delegate configured, I will simply update the UI of, for example, PowerShell to say I'm updating the target list, I will uh, update the enable folder creation flag for the list and execute the query and then I will simply uh, let the user know that the update has been completed. So that's the uh, code of the extensibility handler. Now let's switch to the provisioning template that we are using to extend uh, this item. So let me add the XML file that we already have uh, in this project uh, and I will show you the content of the template. Well, the template is just an XML template in which I configure few custom fields, a content type and a custom list, which will be the list of contacts list. Moreover, I have a provider section through which I define a provider, which will be enabled, which will target an handler type, which will be the type name of my extensibility handler, together with the fully type name of the assembly. So the name, the version, the culture, even if it is network, and the public key token, even if it is null, because this time my extensibility provider does not use uh, a uh, fully signed uh, uh, assembly, a strong named assembly. Then I can provide a custom configuration section if I want. It's not mandatory, it's just an optional uh, capability that I have. And this information will become available to my extensibility provider when it will be executed. So if you go to PowerShell, you connect to a target site, which can be, for example, the one we have right here, which is a fresh new uh, modern team site that I've just created. Well, we can connect to the target site. Moreover, 
I have uh, the Visual Studio environment connected through a debugger to the PowerShell IZ interface. So as soon as I will uh, execute the apply PMP provisioning template onto the target, I will see what is happening under the cover. So let me execute this statement, this command let. And as you can see, we are going to apply the template onto the target and we are in the debugger. Let me press F5. It will take a while uh, to create the list, uh, the field and the content types. And as soon as the provisioning will be completed, my custom handler will be fire will be used by the engine. The list instance is almost ready. And here we are. Here we are in the extensibility manager of the provisioning engine. And as soon as we will say provision targeting our extensibility handler, as you can see, this one is the type I showed you before in Visual Studio. And by pressing F11, I will access my custom extensibility provider. And here we are. And now I am executing the code of my extensibility provider. I can play with it. I can go through all of the uh, uh, statements that I have in my source code and I can update the enable for the creation of my target list. Let me press F5 to go straight to the end of this uh, 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 template application. And if I go back to the target site, open the site content, here we have the custom list of contact list and I can, of course, create a new folder inside this list. What is, what is critical uh, about this demo is that you will need to copy the assembly of the extensibility provider into the folder in which you have, for example, the PMP PowerShell online common let. That's one of the possible locations, that the suggested one in my opinion, so that you will find your extensibility provider available for the PMP provisioning engine. And that's it. Enjoy extending the PMP provisioning engine. Thank you.